Hello everyone, today we'll be covering the complete lore of the star units. This will be everything from how they perform in combat, notes that mention them, info from the debugging code, locations related to them, and finally, stars we can talk to. So with no more delay, let's just get right into this. Star Unit, Scheisse Heist Technik Offshare Replicas, also known as Starlings, are combat replicas of the fourth generation. These units are the standard guard units, and a Starling is a bird, meaning that they, much like their sisters, share in the bird motif. By the events of the game, almost all the star units have been corrupted. These lost replicas usually are armed with batons which they use during their time as guard units. Using debug, we can see that they sport 55 HP, placing them between the late game Yules with 50 HP and the Storches which have 80. These units sport extra speed compared to some other units, being able to quickly move towards you and swing their baton at you. There are also officer stars which have shields that they can use to block damage. The best way to handle the regular stars would be use a shotgun at point blank range. However, with the officer stars, the rifle is able to penetrate their shields and thus is the better response for them. We can also learn more about the stars from their replica overview page. This can tell us that they are a generation 4 low cost combat unit that sports a biomechanical with polyethylene shell and bullet resistant with armor plating frame. Continuing to the overview page, it reads as follows. The standard model of the protector security technicians. Fitted with extended legs, star units gracefully tower over most gestalts. Despite their heavy armor, they can move swiftly with their long stride. Their cool and detached demeanor allows them to analyze situations with objectivity and deploy force as required. Trained in close combat and riot control techniques, they operate best in small squads led by an officer star equipped with a ballistic shield. We can learn more about the issues these units face from their replica issues page. Despite their normally laid back demeanor, stars have a strong internal hierarchy, which is important to take into consideration when promoting units to officers. Not promoting a respected unit or promoting a unit low in status can lead to friction within dorms. Stars will occasionally develop in-groups involving physical punishments. It is recommended to allow some officers to own military weapons as fetish objects to stabilize their persona. In the game, we learn details about specific star units across multiple notes. Starting off is Star S2305. S2305 is the protector on duty for the search protocol document. Star S2306 is the star who filed request form F29. She is a guard in the workers' quarters. She requests a repair on the door with the following details. Service object, Himmel Type D Automatic Security Door. Location of object, Worker Block A6 Corridor. Description, the lock on the staff door in A6 is jammed again, requesting a locksmith. And this is in reference to the door that we ourselves have to unlock with a locksmith box. Star S2320 is depicted on the identification card that we use to access the elevator. From the details on the card, we can see that she is a guard for the hospital wing, level 3, from cycles 3 through 9. Star S233, also known as Tank, is depicted on the shooting range scoreboard. She has the nickname of Tank and is seen as scoring below Sieben and Hunter, which means she's a pretty good shot, but not one of the best. Next, though, we have Hunter. Star S3131, or Hunter, is shown as having a signed star poster and a nickname. This poster can be found within Stardorm North. Hunter is also noted on the shooting range notes, seen as the number one shot in the facility, acquiring the top four spots with scores of 60-60, 60-60, 60-60, and 1-52-60, placing above both Tank and Sieben. Seeing as there's only one star in the room that we find this note, it could be theorized that the star in the dorm is all that remains of Hunter. It should be noted that the star in the star north dorm has no shield, which indicates it's not an officer which really could have been the point of issue for Hunter, and possibly why she was corrupted. Or we could take it to suggest that this is not Hunter at all. There are two star dorms in the game, North and South. Star Dorm North is a small room with three bunk beds, meaning up to six stars should have stayed here during the facility's operation. There are two lockers, likely for what have been the officers of this cadre, and a desk in the bottom, which I've already mentioned, where we can see some light, and a star poster that is signed by Hunter. Stardorm South, also just called Stardorm and Debug, is located directly below the Aura Dorms and is accessed by jumping down a massive hole in the bottom of that dorm that connects to the Stardorm. This room has four bunk beds, meaning up to eight stars could have stayed here during the facility's operation, also meaning it's the largest dorm. There are lockers next to each bed, as well as a desk on the far side of the door. On this desk, there is another star poster. 
On the north side of the room, there is a HIMAT poster, which shows the unit's pride in the revolution and the nation in general. There are two stars that we can talk to in the game. In the re-education wing of Serpiens, we come across a wounded star in the Yarula. This star is the first NPC we meet in the game. Elster and her have the following conversation. Star says, An Elster unit. You should leave this place. This facility is lost. Turn back now before it's too late. Elster replies by saying, I'm looking for this woman. Have you seen her? Star responds, I don't know her, but maybe she's one of the workers. All the distort workers were sent to the mines below. If she's still alive, she's probably down there. There's an access elevator than mine shaft one level below, but you'll need an administrator's key to use it. Speaking to her after the main dialogue, she says the following. I'll be out of here as soon as this repair patch stops my bleeding. You should probably get out of here too. I don't know who that woman is, but she is probably dead by now. If you still want to go, good luck. You're not a protector, so I can't tell you more than I already have. They decommission us both. The dialogue expresses to Elster the goal of how to find Elena, as well as the fact that she personally intends on leaving the facility. If you exit the room and re-enter immediately, she will still be there. However, after progressing a bit, you will find she is gone. Much later into the game, we find another star. This wounded star is in the mine shaft and is named Star S23 question mark question mark, and is accompanied by an unnamed Yule. This star has several lines which will reveal details about their and the Yule's relationship, as well as themselves, demonstrating a recovery of gestalt memories and development of a romantic relationship with the Yule. They state the following. Hey, don't cry. It'll be over soon. Remember that time we went to the surface? The stars were so beautiful. I wish we could go there again. Hey, listen. I'll let you in on a little secret. I can remember my name from my old wife. Isn't that funny? Don't you want to know it? Here, I'll tell you. It'll be our secret together. So you can stop crying, okay? It'll be okay. Wherever it is I'm going, I'll wait for you there. The room the duo is found in is referred to in debug mode as Star Room. In the background audio of this room, one can hear the faint crying of a Yule. This can be better heard if one mutes the music. Also around the pair there is an entire cadre, including two Yules and four stars crowded around them. The meaning of this could vary. However, they are noticeably not corrupted. A theory about their fate goes as follows. Seeing as there is an entire cadre here, this cadre likely fled into this room for safety when the infection took over the mines. However, due to lack of lighting or flashlights, they were unable to see the wires and thus ran straight into them. This decimated the cadre and heavily wounded the last star. After the cadre slowly died out, trying to get to the corner in some relative safety, it really only left the last final pair of the Yule and the Star who were lovers. Likely meaning they stayed close to each other during the frantic attempt to cross through the darkness, meaning the star possibly could have took a hit on the wires, shielding the Yule from the wires to protect them. And the Yule could have dragged her from her wounded spot and the bodies of her cadre over to the clearing, possibly slightly before Elster arrives. But with that, I've now covered every detail that we have on these soldiers. They are a rather interesting enemy and have lore that adds depth beyond just an enemy without a face. While we cannot help the star in Yule, nor can we travel with the star at the start, we can at least help put their sisters to rest and find some solstice that way. But that's all I've got for you guys today. If you like this type of content, feel free to either subscribe or join my main Discord link below, the unofficial Signalis Discord also link below, or the Ardash Signalis Discord link below. All three are awesome places that you'll be able to find people to talk about Signalis to. But for today, this has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all next time. Thank you.